Uh, my name is Ong Liang Jing. I'm 91 years old. I've been here for over 50 years now, and uh, I've been selling chemicals most of the time, and uh, for especially to those uh, retail retail work is being done here, but the wholesale of, of uh, chemicals to the factories, plantations, and mines, and the schools, and all, have been done through the warehouse, through my office, and through the well. I'm only uh, here because I started, I couldn't leave the retail side because it, it's more like a pastime to me too. Soon after the Korean War, uh, I started this shop. Uh, but uh, before coming over here, I, I had already established myself in two other places in town. This is the third premises we occupied. That was soon after the no, it was the beginning of the Korean War. And then we've been here for, well, o over 50 years now. So it's quite difficult for us to, you know, to leave the place with all the things and to, you know, to assemble them and then uh, pack them and then, I don't know, by the time we we, re we recover the goods, I think we will, they will be half spoiled and then we may not know where they are kept. It would be, be a big problem after this. But anyway, <laughs> being so old, we have to face the fact that uh, things like this are happening all over the world, you know. Perhaps uh, they will get some sort of uh, relief or compensation elsewhere. But down here, uh, they would not consider anything at all. So. They have given us time to move and uh, we are asking for more time because it's difficult to get new premises and it's also difficult to move things you already have accumulated over the years. So that's a problem now. There's very little left now and uh, all you see is maybe the remnants we are trying to, to get rid of within uh, these few days. Uh, you had the choice uh, if your landlord was very kind and uh, said okay we keep the rent at 1000 you can stay here as long as you like uh, would you prefer to stay here doing this or would you prefer to travel i think at the present moment i think i would have <laughs> take the chance of retiring so <laughs> you know i think i should have done what i should have done and no more i, I I would be cheating myself if I don't, you know, don't go for a very good, good holiday. You know? Most of the holiday, holidays I've taken were very short when I was young. And then over the years, uh, I've just traveled to Australia to visit my great-grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And that's about all I did. But I never back to Europe or to Japan anymore. What was the eviction maybe a blessing in disguise? Maybe so, I think <laughs> maybe so. Otherwise <laughs> it may take another ten years before I think of <laughs> moving out. I, I think it should I should be thankful to the you know, to this eviction problem. Otherwise I wouldn't know when to stop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mark Heike told me that uh, you thought about now that you are forced to go in retirement that you you might decide uh, just to go travel some. My what? That you might just decide to travel the world a little yeah, bit. Yeah. <laughs> Where would you like to go? Well, I'd like to visit uh, again Japan. Uh, I love Japan very much. And uh, Korea. And uh, maybe go back to Europe for another visit. I love Switzerland much. I have been to you know, places, the Scandinavian countries. I hope I will be able to visit. And maybe even visit Alaska <laughs> to, to try how cold I can stand. <laughs> so I hope I will be able to achieve that within the next five years. <laughs> okay. When are you going to leave? Uh, by next year, I think I should be able to start everything. Uh, yeah. Are you going to hike or ride a bicycle? Oh, no. 
Maybe I would even have to get someone to push me on a wheelchair. <laughs> uh, they do have that sort of survey in China, but I don't know where elsewhere. So I probably will get one of my sons to accompany me or just uh, help her or something. Do you uh, think that Julia's still changed a lot over the last years? Is it different, Julia Street today and then? Oh yeah, Julia Street previously was, I think, more picturesque. In fact, you have more of these small, tiny shops. They have moved away. Most of them have moved away out to the outskirts, you know. The, because previously, the shops here, the, the, the owners would live upstairs and uh, occupy the, the ground floor, the shop front, would be uh, will, will only for what they sell. Now they moved away to further out to the outskirts, to the small villages and towns, and uh, they only come down for business. So you won't find actually after five o'clock, the whole street is already dead. Not like previously, it was all alive. And during the hippie years, Julius Street was the most uh, congested street. You find all the small, small. Uh, uh, hotels, budget hotels, catering for the hippies. And uh, at night, the whole place will be, you know, full of them drinking away, you know, and uh, uh, cavorting along the streets and uh, singing and making a lot of noise. And they were, they were favorites with the, all the uh, coffee shops where they sell them a lot of beer and all that. So those days are gone now. Okay. and. Uh, and the earlier days where they had the trams, you know, maybe not the carrying passengers anymore, but the, the trams carrying the, the, the ingots, uh, tin ingots from uh, Datu Pramat smelting to, to the pier. And uh, there was a picturesque days. You may, if you did go along Penang Road, you may see some of the uh, tram lines, you know, and uh, you, you, all those, uh, uh, all those are bygone days. And then, days, if we always think that those days, truly street is the street for shoppers. Whatever you want, you can get from truly uh, street. And uh, the first, the first uh, uh, image that uh, anybody coming down from the pier, you know. Uh, would have of Georgetown, uh, it would be uh, quite revealing, you know, of Georgetown to just going through Julius Street. And where are you moving now all your things here? Where do you go with this? Well, we have an office of visit down in Rope Walk. So part of the goods will be there, but that place is too small to accommodate everything else. So. We have to move a lot of things down to our warehouse in Ban Lafaz. That is a bit inconvenient. And uh, also, you, <laughs> you lose a lot of things by then. Uh, and will you keep running your business or will you get retired? What will you do? I, I hope to retire once we move over to the office, you know. Mm -hmm. I think <laughs> I've had, I, I, I earned it now. <laughs> I should go for a long holiday after this. Eviction, the reason why you want to retire now? Have you thought about getting retired before? No, actually, <laughs> this is forced upon me, I thought, you know. So, because by the time I move over there, I will lose most of the customers who come down buying something and chatting away and all that sort of thing. Uh, it's more like a meeting place for most of my customers who are very regular and, uh, and uh, when they have their problems. <laughs> Whether they be chemical or personal or what, they always come down and chat with me for a while, you know. So it's more a meeting place. Like uh, I would prefer to stay, spend my hours here than at home, you know. I have my good company. I have people, to, you know, who are interested in things and wanting to know. And uh, I feel very pleased when I can impart some knowledge to them when they have their problems. What does it mean economically for you to stop working 
Uh, he, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, uh, met, he wouldn't make so much of difference because I think by the time I move over the office, I'll be able to uh, impart most of uh, what is necessary to make seals to the to the staff over there, and uh, we uh, our wholesale business will still carry on. Makes no difference. It's only the retail part that will be missing. That's all, which is more more the personal feeling of a loss than anything else. You know, um, monetary, I monetarily, I don't think there'll be much of a difference. So it's good then. I I, I would have uh, more so been forced into retirement. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of people may say that you are 91 years old, you should have stopped working anyway, like maybe <laughs> years ago. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about that? Well, it has never occurred to me uh, that I should retire earlier because, you know, I'm, I feel very lost when at home by yourself because uh, I lost my wife four years ago and that makes it's much more difficult to spend time alone in the house. I don't have uh, my my children with me. They have their own families, so they have only their own places to live in. So I only have a maid with me t at home. So it's quite uh, lonely to be at home. But uh, to, I think <laughs> it helps me to to be more uh, uh, make me more a happier man <laughs> to to be amongst people who at least acknowledge uh, what I, the, my, the help I can give them. You see? There are many of these customers, especially these small ones, mm -hmm. you know, the, the people who try to make a living on their own by selling household goods and making their own preparations like uh, dishwash or laundry mixing, uh, 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 all the detergents that they, they can sell either to the hawkers, you know, or to households. Uh, that helps them uh, to, to make a small living. Especially the young ones, after school, they don't know what to do and they don't have enough knowledge to do further studies or to gain any, any employment, you know, of, of uh, note. So when they come, uh, I, I help them to, to find some sort of, well, way to make a few dollars. You know, and uh, for that, I have a very, uh, I think, a very uh, good number of customers who have been very grateful in that respect. Uh, some even have made f uh, quite a bit, uh, able to, to buy houses for themselves. So, in that way, I, I, I think uh, life, life is worth living <laughs> in the sense that you can help others. Yeah. And what do you think about the owner? Like that they, uh, that the owner evicts all the people. Do you know the owner? And would you do the same if you were the owner? Uh, no, I, I, I don't know the owner, but uh, I, I think, well, the fact is he, he has invested some money to buy the property. So what, he, he will want to make some returns on it. So the only way he can do it is to, to well, uh, make the place, pretty up the place, or make, uh, make a, a better appearance of the whole building and then ch charge a higher rental. Otherwise, he, he, there, there's no reason why you should invest in a property like this. If I were an investor, I would think of that too. So it can't be helped if they, that we are helpless in that way. We, we can't actually do anything uh, and they will not compensate you and uh, it's within their rights I suppose. What do you think about the about the changings in Georgetown in general like with UNESCO status a lot of Georgetown has changed what do you think about that because there are people maybe benefit from it other people don't like what is your opinion? Well, uh, of the what uh, of the the business in Penang or what? So yeah, about the the whole change yeah. with the heritage sages and 
now with the hotels coming up and oh, oh uh, well i think it's affected mostly the people who have been living here who have uh, done business here as i said most of them would have their shop fronts downstairs and occupying the top floor as a dwelling place uh, they they are the, those are those who are most affected but then i think they all get used to the idea now most of them would have uh, bought you know residences away from the the georgetown and uh, they they i think they more more used to that sort of thing because previously as i say uh, the the whole street is uh, made up of people who you who not only live here they work here but now those who work here don't live here anymore they live elsewhere and uh, i mean it's a good thing we have here for one thing to live in the countryside instead of in the, the georgetown but for, for a while i think truly street truly street, truly street is the only street that you can see you know first coming down to georgetown an impression of what georgetown is it has all the qualities of of georgetown you know every every nook and corner will have a story you have more, most of the shops here of uh, having all sorts of professions and selling all sorts of goods and uh, nowhere else no other street in penang can boast of this and generally speaking do you think it's a benefit for georgetown as such or not well it has benefited georgetown it's a main thoroughfare actually from from coming down you know, from the outskirts you go to penang road and go down to the pier people going down to the mainland will have to pass through chule street you know before the highway and all that there is only street you know and people from the mainland whether they can by come by car or or come by ferry or they they will have to pa pass through chule street to get to the other sides of Penang. Do you think it's good to be listed as UNESCO World Heritage? Oh, definitely. Yeah, because it, as I say, it's the only the streets that spells up Georgetown. You want to know Georgetown, you must go to Chulia Street. You don't have to go any other. Like Campbell Street, the the street spiral to to Chulia Street, Campbell Street, Kimberley Street. They don't have all these uh, uh, different different shops. Different people uh, stay here. You have all the Indians, Malays, Chinese. You know, everybody. You know, everything their own shops, making a living. Even in small little corners, like the bamboo shops, just in a small little corner, they can make, make a living. You know, or uh, uh, you have find you find a Chinese women uh, by the side of the streets, hawking their own uh, uh, cakes. You know, they, you know or they, for, they have people with sitting sitting along the streets uh taking their breakfast or lunch or dinner you know that's the only street that you can see everything you don't have to go anywhere else in georgetown you know what do you think if uh, the people on julia street get evicted what will happen to georgetown then Well, that that would be a big problem yeah in the end you only have uh, shops and uh, i think the whole street will be will be dead like i say the shops are closed up to 5 o'clock the whole street will be dead and except you have some you will have some sort of uh business done with amongst the hawker stalls uh plying along the, the certain sections like along the love lane and all that certain section and uh yeah, maybe one or two coffee houses or, and uh, one or two bars that's all uh, otherwise the whole street would be dead then not like before we, we, when they, they they were residing here the 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 at night it was still busy you know people still moving in and out you know take uh in fact even sitting outside the ho the shop shops you know uh we got uh chatting away with their neighbors and all this sort of thing. but that there's a lost era you know in the old days even you find 
you mean in Canavan Street. You know, they sit on stools, they made themselves. You know, there's one 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 plank and they do they sort the stools. They would <laughs> they would make themselves and they sit on the five foot way and chat away with the neighbours. You know, they don't take chairs out to sit. Oh, those days have all gone by and now you don't see people anywhere on the pavements anymore. No? So it's quite dead in that respect, except for I said that those places where they have the eateries. Uh, otherwise, at night, there's no attraction anymore. Do you think if you keep the buildings but kick the tenants out, is that still heritage or not? I think some of the owners may keep the building. They may restructure or they may just uh, make, make the, uh, the, the, maybe the frontage look more beautiful and maybe perhaps clean up the place and make it may have higher, higher quality uh, 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 occupants like uh, boutiques and hair salons and all this. But uh, you take some time. This sort of thing may happen over maybe five or ten years. People don't move so fast as in other cities. They always say Penang is always very slow. <laughs> A slow and happy place to be in. <laughs> Uh, how come that you are here till more than 50 years and you never met your owner? Well, it has, it, I think it's one of, a, a person who owns maybe is a landed property owner. He may own maybe more houses even along uh, the whole peninsula. So usually they entrust the management to a law, you know, a firm of solicitors. So the owner may be so rich that he doesn't even care whether he makes the money or not. But I know the owner is very, very rich. He come from a very well-known family in Kuala Lumpur. So for the past 30 years or so, I think they've all the work has been handled by the uh, his laws. Do you think it would be different, maybe less eviction cases, if the owner would also be in Georgetown and know the people here and know the place? No, in, in what sense you mean? You think it would be different because now you said the owner is in Kuala Lumpur yeah. and maybe he doesn't care about yeah, Georgetown yeah. or about the house. It's true. Do you think it would be different if the owner would... Oh, definitely. If the owner would have maybe one or two houses, and uh, he would more or less um, handle all the business by himself, he doesn't have to go to a lot. But a, a person who has a lot of property in Kuala Lumpur and elsewhere, he will have to entrust all this to maybe an estate agent or a, a lawyer. So actually, he wouldn't care whatever happens to the property as long as uh, there's some revenue uh, being shown at the end of the year. So it's up to laws. If it makes, if you come across a lawyer that manages uh, the, the property, uh, is a kind person, a very understanding guy, maybe he can more, be more lenient or maybe he can think of uh, ways of compensating uh, the, the tenants when they remove. But if you have a lawyer who, who is managing and he is not that, you know, uh, conducive to things like that, in, in uh, giving allowances to the tenants, then the problem starts where he can be very strict over his terms you know, uh, of eviction and things like that. I suppose that happens everywhere. Why do the people rent the places and instead of buying the houses? Why do you rent for more than 50 years instead of buying this shop house? Well, uh, actually, what happened to these row houses? I think the, the owner has uh, more or less uh, uh, given it away to relatives. And the relative has uh, entrusted the management to the same lawyer, and that's why it's been difficult. That the, old, the present owner 
uh, has no direct dealing with the, with the, the tenants. So it all goes through the law. So as I said, if the law is understanding and all that, it'd be easier. But it's one that is hard to talk to, and there's no, you know, uh, no spirit of kindliness and all that in his heart. I think it would be difficult for the tenants who have to be evicted. If you would like to buy this warehouse, would it be possible or not? Well, if, if, we are, if it were offered to us, it would have been possible for us, you know. But the thing is, all that sort of thing is done through the lawyers and nobody knows what happened. All we knew is that the, the, the person lawyer just sends an eviction notice, that's all. We never, we never knew of uh, the sale of the property. You know? In fact, when I first came, the property was handled by a friend of mine. And he offered me, that was when I first moved, he offered me the whole property with the hotel wasn't up then, it was just a vacant land for two million dollars. And at that time, I calculated if I invest two million dollars, I've got to uh, get the money f uh, from the bank. And then uh, I'll find that from the rental that's been paid by the, the tenants, it won't be sufficient for me to cover the, the bank interest. So I gave up the idea. That's all. How high was your rent? What were you paying like over the last 50 years? When I first started, I think I paid $36, 36 ringgit for yeah, per month, years back. And nowadays, what do you pay? Now we are paying 1000 I want to know what kind of chemicals you are selling in this shop here. Who is your customer? What do they do with the chemicals? Well, uh, as I said, uh, most of the customers on the retail side, they, they will buy to make household preparations like detergents and uh, uh, maybe cleaning, other cleaning uh, uh, preparations. Uh, about, and then the, the school boys will come in to buy for, for the experiments. And then there will be people who, who, who are interested in uh, maybe in making uh, other uh, other products and they need help where, as far as what sort of chemicals they should use because we are the only shop who, who sell chemicals in retail nowhere else i think in the whole of malaysia you know who do retail business because it's so difficult so complicated it involves a lot of work and uh, a lot of wastage you know we go to open one bag of 25 kilos and sell piecemeal a kilo at a time. It takes time. And most of the time, some chemicals will be spot and we have got to throw away. So that's why uh, you don't have many shops in Malaysia selling with you. Only recently I have found few custom, a few shops in, uh, in uh, Kuala Lumpur doing it. Otherwise, most of the people will just email us and uh, you know and uh, we would send to the, by them uh, to them by other by by parcel post or to to the railway or to the lorry and then uh, they would pay us online or something.